What is up, YouTube? I'm Levi Jekyll. I'm Nate Carpenter. We are Perform24. This is episode number two. We still don't have a name, so please help us out um, in the comments. So, Thursday morning, uh, 11.30, just finished a pretty steady morning of training. I was very, very steady. Um, so, training a little bit of everybody. We got some college athletes that are back for the summer. Um, so, we got our normal adults. We got some college athletes back. Uh, we got some high school athletes that are just getting out of school, so they're coming in at different times. Uh, but very steady morning of training. Um, actually, I want to mention that Fitbit thing. So what? So Nate was wearing a Fitbit earlier this week. Um, what, what, what was that? So I'm going through my mass gaining phase right, right now. Right, 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 right. We're on our grind going through a long hypertrophy phase where I'm trying to gain weight. And I'm struggling to gain weight. So I, I put my Fitbit on and I was like, all right, I want to see, you know, like how many calories am I expending within a day? Well, long story short, so in one day, just being in here, being in the environment we are, walking, helping people out constantly within the gym, I took 20,000 steps, which equated to about 11 or 12 miles. I think it was like 12 miles on the dot. So walking 12 miles in a day without, that's not even including my workout. So right there, I'm already burning about 1,500, and then my workout on top of that. So it might, <laughs> it makes sense when I'm burning 4,000 calories a day while I can't gain any weight, but. Man, that's great. What day was that? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Two yeah. days ago. So yeah, full day, long day, morning to evening, uh, covered 12 miles in a 2,000 square foot facility. <laughs> so. That's crazy. But I didn't help him out there. So hey, it's, a, it's a good problem to have, though. That's Some people have the opposite, where they're true. just sitting down all day, and true. they have trouble finding time for that, and yeah, honestly, yeah. That's, we're lucky for that. We Hard gainer problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Tuesday, on my side, I was actually not in here um, much on Tuesday. Justin Timberlake went to, went to see our boy JT. Um, solid, solid performance. That was a bucket list item. I'm a huge JT fan, so uh, my wife surprised us with tickets, so the two of us went to see him on Tuesday. It was fun. That's probably why I walked so many miles. Yeah, you were doing double. That you were doing double the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good stuff. Um, okay, so in the last video, we kind of talked about uh, how we got into the pro athlete training. Um, we kind of gave our two cents on how like a young coach could enter that market. Um, but today is going to be a little bit more geared towards the masses. Um, so we train like a lot of local adults that are just regular people um, that don't live like the crazy pro athlete lifestyle and don't need the crazy pro athlete training programs. Um, so this is all about how we train like our local adults. Um, so we'll just kind of we'll just kind of jump into it. So you know. This being said, like the majority of our training year round is the adults, all of their programs do have pro athlete themes. Um, so like all of our programming term or our programming methodology is all born out of like pro athlete performance training. Like that's kind of the spectrum of the training industry that we live in. Uh, so you kind of pick up on trends and themes through everybody's programs. Um, the structure of our programming really doesn't train or change that much and it doesn't fluctuate so we always have a prep block the prep block is like a warm-up there's a lot of mobility a lot of correctives in there um, followed by a plyometric block or an Olympic block um, primary strength block core auxiliary strength block and then a, a metabolic finishing block um, so this, that structure and that progression um, from prep block all the way to the finisher doesn't really fluctuate much. Um, what does fluctuate is how we emphasize those different those different elements. Um, so for our adult training, I would just say in general, we don't do much plyometric work. Um, so very few of them have plyometrics, um, and we don't really get into like true strength phases with them. So I don't know. I think the heaviest we've ever gone, we probably have one guy right now that's in fives as well as in fives. Mm -hmm. So he gets down to, you know, heavy fives, but we don't do anything heavier than that. There's just, the risk reward isn't worth it there. So, you know, we don't do triples, we don't do heavy doubles, we don't do singles with our adults. Um, I don't know, what 
does. I mean, depending if that's unless they specifically ask for something like that. True. So that's why we we don't want to say that we won't do anything like right, that. Right, right, right. True. For the majority of people, we're trying. Our main goal is to keep them healthy. Yeah. Like and that's outside usually, of these walls. Right, and that's primarily. yeah, and that's usually their goal too. You know, they really don't care about having a, a max deadlift um, increase or a max bench press increase. Um, but yeah, in the case that they do, you know, sure, we'll, you know, we'll definitely, definitely try to accommodate that. So. I mean, so it's like we don't do a lot of plyometrics or things like that, but we do have people like with Mike that's coming off of yeah, 20 yeah. Achilles that we're adding things into, like right after his prep block in the plyo block, we're adding things that he can improve on because it's something that he specifically needs. Yep. And right. that's obviously a rare occurrence, yep. something like that, but for something like that with him, that's very helpful. And that's yeah. why we're not saying we don't ever do it, we're just, it's it's rare. Yeah, very true, very true. Yeah, and even actually we have a, a guy who's traditionally kind of been in a weight loss program, kind of, I mean, kind of a weight loss program. He was doing plyos this morning, you know, and he's, a, he's the typical guy that you wouldn't see doing a plyometric movement in probably any gym. So um, granted, he's built up to that, but yeah, we'll definitely get into that a little yeah. bit. He was doing a, an assisted TRX jump, so you know, kind of a, a lower level um, regression of a plyo. But uh, let me see here, what do we got? So, um, let's see. Just one little note I talked about is like the balance between injury prevention and fat loss. Um, so most of our adult clients that come in here, you know, they do have a few pounds to drop, um, and that's really where their emphasis is. Um, so we'll 100% address that right out of the gate. You know, like we want them, we want them working, uh, we want them, you know, really working when they come in here. Uh, but we also have a little bit more insight into what their body needs than probably even they do. So we sneak like injury prevention um, strategies into their programming, even though they didn't necessarily ask for that. So, we'll, you know, just for an example, um, we'll throw in quad stretches and hip flexor stretches all the time to our adults just because we know they sit a lot, um, we know they travel a lot, uh, so they need that. Now, are they even, you know, asking for that? Not necessarily, like they're asking to lose weight, they're asking to feel better, but we just kind of inherently know that this is going to help them. Um, so we kind of... I mean, it's, did you really like describe how we do it too? So we do it interset mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not a lot of like, oh, just sit here, do this stretch, that stretch, this stretch. It's kind of bang, bang. So, I mean, it still is after two primary movements, we kind of do a mobility thing or a stretch. So it takes the monotony of just stretching and adds it in to make sure that you're doing it. Right. So we'll use, we use stretching almost as a, like a little rest inside of a strength circuit. So just for a very specific example, um, like we would do a reverse lunge, um, you know, a reverse lunge, eight reps aside, a single arm row, 10 reps aside, and then we would go into a quad stretch. Um, so they would stretch out their quads before going back into that reverse lunge. It addresses their movement efficiency. Um, it gives them the ability or the chance to rest um, and kind of sneaks in mobility without making this like, okay, now we're gonna stretch for 10 minutes and it's gonna be boring and you know, you don't really wanna do it. It's, you honestly um, just described another thing that we do do as well, which is a lot of full body. Yes. So a lot of, I mean, we're not just trying to attack the hamstrings today. We're not just trying to just purely work on the legs, whatever. We do a lot of different going back and forth, kind of get the blood rush from each side, get like the metabolic rate up a little bit. Yep. Um, but that's yeah. what they need. Yeah, total body work um, is almost, uh, we live in total body uh, splits for most of our adults. Um, it's just very effective for them. Especially if they're coming two, three times a week, it's, it's yep. what they need. Yep. So they don't get it every day. Yep. Um, another topic that I had on here is detailed coaching for technique um, versus like letting it rip for finishers. Um, so again, like when you're working with a pro athlete that's got like a, a shoulder issue or a hip issue, um, technique during the movement is super important. So we really want to train movement patterns that um, create efficient and healthy and pain-free movement. Um, with adults, not to say that we don't do that because we absolutely will coach technique, 
Um, but I think just in general, we're a little bit more lax on their technique than we are on like a pro. Um, and there's a couple reasons why. One, um, we see them more often over the course of a year, right? So we don't have like a really hard off season timeline that you have to be right in six weeks. And so every rep literally matters. Uh, we know that we're gonna have a couple months to kind of slowly course correct their movement. Um, and second of all, if we over coach some of our adults, it's, it's just way too much, right? Like they're not really here to like really perfect like a retraction, like as long as they're getting a little bit of retraction and they're scap during a row, um, and as long as they're initiating the movement with the retraction, then that's a win, right? Like that's gonna correct over the course of three, four, five, six, you know, eight weeks. Um, and then, uh, you know, like, like we talked about, like a lot of them like are here on that fat loss stuff. So as long as they're, their pace, like we're on them with their tempo a lot more, right? So like, as long as that pace is staying, staying high, then um, that's kind of a win for them. I don't know, it's kind of a fine line, I guess, but I don't wanna make it seem like we don't coach technique with our adults because we do, um, but that's not like as high of a priority and it's not something that we just like hawk over them and breathe down their neck on just because as long as they're moving, they're pretty much good. Yeah, honestly, overcoaching in that aspect can have more of a negative effect where right. they're not getting, seeing at that tempo, doing this or that, yeah. they just get frustrated. They just want to come in here, they want to move, they want to sweat. Right. Before they go to work after work, before they go home, for dinner, things 100%. like that. So. Well, yeah, and think about this too. Like some of our adults are, you know, a 44-year-old adult who has had a lunge pattern that hasn't changed in 35 years. Like we're not going to correct that in two weeks anyways. Um, and trying and spending two weeks like forcing a perfect rep is probably just going to be frustrating. So, um, you know, you kind of described it just in the aspect of we see them over a long period of time, so we don't feel like within this week, like it needs to change. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. slowly is changing, and that's a good thing. Yep. It might take a little bit longer, yep. but it's going to get there, and it's going to get to what we need. Yep. But it doesn't have to be hypercritical to the point where they're not even getting the work in that they need. Yep, yep. And then on finishers, so finishers, which we've been getting crazy lately on our finishers, um, which people have been loving. So. Um, typically when we write a finisher, there's almost like no technique coaching at all in that. It's just a series of exercises. Speed is typically the, the determining factor that we're looking for. Um, and we just let them rip. So, you know, when it's time to blow it out at the end of a workout, like just go get it, like dig deep and empty the tank. Um, and you know, we obviously will select exercises that are Conducive for that, that, yeah. You know, for that style of keeping training. it more simple instead of trying to do ridiculous exercises that yep. you can't keep that crazy tempo up. Yep. Um, cool. Okay, so looking at this, um, yeah, I mean, training program themes. We kind of touched on that, like the total body stuff, um, how we structure their sessions. We covered all that. Um, Let's see, do you want to kind of give an example of a program that you wrote recently? Like I'm trying to think of one that would be good. Um, in what aspect? Just just kind of like just kind of like walk through like the train like the, the the thought process. Yeah, the thought process it. behind the way that you program for somebody. I'm trying to think of somebody that's good. Um, well let's say I mean mobility, adding that certain mobility yeah. that they need specific to that person. So someone that has a lot of immobilization within their T-spine, right. so a lot of their in-between sets, they're gonna be doing little things, even though they might not know what our thought process is behind it, we're thinking the entire time. Like yeah, we want yeah, them right. to be able to move in their upper back, yeah. little things like that. Um, yeah, it is fun. It is fun. It's just, I love like, um, one of my like mentors, I, I think he's the one that put me in this thought process a, a couple years ago, but he, um, he told me if you can like remove yourself from the situation, like that's when you know you've built a good system. And so like during the middle of the day or even like this morning when it's just 
we're just rolling and we're just humming in here. Um, we got you know four or five, six people in here all working on their own programs, all doing their own exercises. Um, they're all kind of in their little zone um, and just like stepping back and watching everybody just get after it. I just love seeing all that stuff. You know, we've got you know guys that are making progress for sure. So. Yeah, our adults, we appreciate them. You know, they, um, the, adult, the adult training isn't quite as flashy and it isn't quite as fancy as some of the, the pro athlete training, but um, they're a huge part of our day, really. Like, our, you know, Perform 24 is, you know, it's nothing without those guys, and they are a big piece of our identity. Um, Another yeah. way you can think of it, too, is thinking of what their main thing outside of here is because we have like yeah, so what their main yeah. hobby or what they did in the past yeah. whether they're an athlete what their sport was what some of their hobbies are whether it's fishing golf something like that where certain people like that were going to work on more rotational yeah type exercises because that's such what, a good point that just goes and tailors to that person specifically and that's what they need and obviously when they're improving outside of here and they're seeing that they want more of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we definitely have guys so that are like, you know, heavy, like recreational golfers. Um, we got a lot of guys that fish. Um, we've got a guy that plays high life, you know, for fun. And so, like, we'll throw lacrosse. You know, we've got some guys that are in, like, you know, just like lacrosse men's leagues um, that travel all over the place. And so, we'll throw some of that, like, fun, like, agility work into their programs that they're, you know, not expecting or. You know that they wouldn't really assume that we would train them like that so it's always fun when you throw something like specific to their hobbies yeah into their training programs that's always I mean that's I just thought of that because that's like another way of thinking when you're making the program like right what does this person need specifically for outside of here yep yep um, yep whether it's what their job is something like that but yeah, that's such a great it's a good way to think about it very good man well we got uh, we got our own lift coming up so you know, we got to get, actually, tell them, tell them about our supplement situation because I was off the supplement game almost completely um, for a long time, probably longer than I should have been. So I was too. Yeah, so I uh, have recently been following Nate's lead on some supplements. What do we got? Just the most basic, most proven, starting with creatine, just creatine pre and post workout. We literally can't beat that. And then we've also been sticking to citrulline malate, mm -hmm. which I think has definitely helped um, with me for not only being able to get more reps during my workouts, because I don't have that constant muscle fatigue that much faster, and I'm getting more reps, as well as I'm not getting a sore yep. after, which I've definitely noticed. Um, yep. I mean, supplements I was off for a bit. If you ever need any recommendations, feel free to hit us up see what we're taking, things like that, because we're always willing to help. Yep. Um, but I'm lucky I just had, when I worked at Performance Lab at UT and things like that, I have a good network of people that have a high amount of knowledge right. as far as supplements. So yeah, exactly. I'm getting a lot of help from them. Because even sometimes we're just like skeptical on certain supplements, don't know whether we should take them. And then if I am, I feel like I can reach out to someone. Yeah. They can send me actual research on something yep. um, and go off of that. But Yeah, no, I've been enjoying it. Partially because it does help. I do believe that it does help. Um, I mean, we're not taking anything crazy. I think the creatine and the citrulline malate is the, that's it. I, citrulline malate tastes terrible. It's like, the, it's not a very enjoyable no. flavor. Um, so I've been mixing it with uh, emergency. So I just like take a little, like, uh, what is that called? Like a little, what is that? Packet of emergency. Gives it a little vitamin C, a little, little electrolyte in there as well. So yeah. it helps with the flavor. Uh, but yeah, just basic things. Just kind of covering and our bases. they're both cheap. Yeah, very cheap. They're not expensive. People think that all supplements have to be so expensive. These are both like 20 bucks and under. Easily will give me, I think, yeah. two months. Yeah, yeah, 60 servings or whatever. Like it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. So. Yeah, man. All right, we're going to hit this workout. But uh, if you guys have any questions, I mean, feel free to hit us up. Either shoot us an email or, you know, find us on Instagram. Always willing to help, so feel free to reach out. All right, guys. Later.